On today's episode, Blackhawks general manager Kyle Davidson introduced Norm McIver and Jeff Greenberg as the new associate general managers yesterday. Pete DeBoer was also fired by the Vegas Golden Knights, putting his name into the mix of potential candidates to be the next head coach of the Chicago Blackhawks. And then the second round of the Stanley Cup playoffs is set to kick off later this evening. All that and plenty more right here on Lockdown Blackhawks. Your Locked On Blackhawks, your daily podcast on the Chicago Blackhawks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in to the Locked On Blackhawks podcast, your daily podcast on the Chicago Blackhawks. Today is Tuesday, May 17th. I'm your host, Jack Bushman. You can find me out on Twitter at Jack Bushman2, or you can also go and check out my Strictly Blackhawks account at Talk and Hockey for all the latest Blackhawks news and updates. And if you're listening to the audio version of today's episode and you like what you're hearing, then please go and show some support first by following the podcast, which will take only a quick couple of seconds, literally just a quick click of the button will help me out tremendously. Go and leave the show five stars as well if you like what you're hearing today. And if you're tuning in through Apple Podcasts or through Spotify, then feel free to go and leave me a review. I always greatly appreciate getting feedback from all of my tremendous listeners out there. Please go and leave me a review if you can. And best of all, it's 100% for free wherever you may be listening to your podcasts, whether that be through Apple Podcasts, Odyssey, Spotify, Google Podcasts, etc. It's all 100% for free. And if you go and follow the show right now, then you'll be able to get the latest episode as soon as it comes out each day. And if you're not already watching the video version of today's episode, then you got to be sure to go and check out Lockdown Blackhawks on YouTube because each and every episode moving forward, folks, is going to be published up on YouTube. So if you haven't done so already, please go and subscribe to Lockdown Blackhawks. Go and smash the like button for me down below. I would greatly appreciate all the support, folks. And also be sure to go and turn on those push notifications so that you can be notified when the episode gets uploaded to YouTube each and every day. All right, good morning, everyone. Thank you all for tuning into another episode of Lockdown Blackhawks, your one-stop shop for all things Chicago Blackhawks and for making the show your first listen here to start off your day. And to kick things off this morning, let's get into the media session that took place yesterday where Kyle Davidson officially introduced the new associate general managers of the Blackhawks in Norm McIver and Jeff Greenberg. Of course, McIver was part of the front office in the past when Stan Bowman was still in charge of things. So fans are a little bit more familiar with him, but it was nice to kind of get a first look, if you will, at Jeff Greenberg and hear him speak publicly about how exactly he's going to be involved in the front office moving forward. Um, but in this media session yesterday, we didn't really learn any breaking news or anything of that sort, so to say. But I thought it was really cool to see the new front office all together for the first time in front of the media. And my biggest takeaway that I had from this media session yesterday was the team mentality that's now in place. For the first time in quite a while for the Chicago Blackhawks, there's an actual team that's working together to try and get the Blackhawks back on track. And, you know, in the past, understand Bowman, um, we've heard that it was kind of just a a one-man show and it was um, his he was the one that was ultimately making the decisions. He was the one who was ahead of everybody. And uh, also with McIver, which led to his departure, we heard some rumblings uh, that those two never really saw eye to eye on some matters. Uh, Norm actually was the one who insisted on the Blackhawks heading into a rebuild a few years back. Um, But ultimately Bowman and a couple of front office executives said, no, we're all going to get fired before we we see this whole thing play out, which led to them, you know, uh, further mismanaging this team and putting the Blackhawks in an even deeper hole, which is where we're at right now. Um, but for the first time in quite a while, all three guys, there's a team aspect in all three guys. It, it seems like everyone is on the same page. Everyone knows what this process is going to entail. 
And I think to finally have that structure and organization all the way at the top, I think that's really a big step in the right direction for the Chicago Blackhawks. Finally, a team is in place. It's not a one-man show uh, like we saw with Bowman. And for Davidson, that's that's really what I like about him the most so far. Other, you know, there, there's a lot of things that I like about Kyle Davidson, but I think his ability and his knowledge of not wanting this to be a one-man show is what makes him already such an intriguing change as uh, opposed to what we've seen in the past. And being so young, I believe, if I'm correct, Davidson is the youngest general manager in the NHL, but being so young, he realizes that he's not going to have all the answers. And he wants to be sure to have a, a strong support staff around him in order to help make these tough decisions. And that's why, you know, he brought back such a respected veteran executive in Norm McIver to have that experience around and to have that knowledge of knowing what it's like to run things in all aspects of the front office. Norm's been doing this for a very long time in a bunch of different areas. And Kyle was fortunate enough to have a relationship with him back in his days when he was, you know, just working his way up um, prior to becoming general manager. And then once he got the job, it really only made sense for him to bring back a veteran leader like Norm McIver back. And of course, McIver is going to be the one that's going to uh, lead the scouting for the Blackhawks going forward. And obviously there's been um, many issues with the scouting and uh, drafting process for, for quite a while. Now that's an area that, that the Blackhawks have struggled in. And I thought it was interesting um, to hear McIver talk about this a little bit yesterday. He did say that things are going to remain relatively the same through this year's NHL draft, but once it's complete, they will be looking to reevaluate uh, the scouting group that's currently set in place. And they've um, also apparently um, given their scouts a, a few things to be looking at differently than what they were in the past in regards to uh, player evaluation and all the stuff that goes into scouting players for the upcoming NHL draft. And we've heard Davidson talk about the draft in particular being such a key area of turning things around. They have to do a better job in that department if they want things to, to turn around correctly. And uh, it sounds like they're already making some changes to that department going forward. And once this NHL draft is complete, it sounds like they're going to be making even more. As for Greenberg, though, uh, again, it, it was nice to kind of hear him have a Q&A, so to speak, for the first time as associate GM. Uh, no surprise, though, that, that most of the talk with him was about his systems and how they're going to be processing data and all that good stuff. Really just more detail on exactly what he's going to play a part in moving forward. Um, but more so than that, again, I think it's really important to hear Kyle talk about how what Jeff brings to the table, he wasn't going to be able to do alone. And Davidson, um, when he was first introduced as general manager, one of the things he talked about was becoming more analytical, becoming uh, better in player development and trying to find ways to have more success than we've seen in the past in that area. And just all that goes back to Davidson wanting to have help. He knows that he wouldn't have been able to lead this change and this venture all by himself. So what did he go and do? He added a, a very veteran executive, maybe not in hockey, but a veteran executive in Jeff Greenberg, who led a huge data and analytics system-based mindset with the Chicago Cubs when they had, you know, Theo Epstein and Jed Hoyer and helped the Cubs get back on top and win the World Series in 2016. And Theo Epstein, known as one of the best executives in all of professional sports, not just baseball. And for him to trust a guy like Greenberg to, you know, have these systems in place that are really key in player development and tracking players and who's having success in what, how can we do a better job in that area and finding out what works for this team to have a guy like Theo Epstein really have trust in Greenberg. I think that speaks volumes as to how valuable he can be to a front office. Um, and again, Kyle realizes that he, he wouldn't be as knowledgeable on that topic as Jeff Greenberg would, obviously. So what did he do? He went out and brought him on as the associate general manager to lead this approach that the Blackhawks are going to be implementing in their organization. Um, and again, that just goes back to Davidson 
wanting to do this correctly. He knew he, he needed help in this area. He doesn't want it to be a one-man show. He wants it to be a team effort. And I just really think that type of change is so refreshing to hear and also necessary, I think, uh, in order to go about this the right way. And since the first day that Kyle was introduced, all we've heard from several different sources is how he's open to other opinions. He wants to have input input from other people in this front office. He's not here to do this alone. He's here to do this right. He wants to hear what other people have to say on issues. And uh, it's just such a nice breath of fresh air to have after Bowman seemingly, you know, thought he was smarter than everyone and um, thought that he would be able to take care of this all by himself. It's just nice to see that Davidson actually believes in adding outside help and, and really just having a team mentality starting all the way at the top. It's not his opinion or nothing, not his opinion or bust. No, it's a complete team effort now with these two guys beside him and Jeff Greenberg and Norm McIver. And I couldn't be happier that that's the case. I couldn't be happier that, you know, Davidson doesn't seem like he has an ego. And even if he does, that's not what's taking center stage. In fact, it's really the complete opposite. Again, he realizes that he's going to need help in this process. And I think having, you know, all three of these guys on the same page with very different backgrounds coming together, I really do believe that's a huge step in the right direction for the top of the ladder, if you will, inside the Chicago Blackhawks organization. All right, there are some of the key takeaways that I had from the Blackhawks front office's media session yesterday. Coming up in just a moment, I will get into Pete DeBoer being fired by the Vegas Golden Knights. But first, I need to talk to you all about Bet Online. It's that time of the year again, folks, as baseball season is finally upon us, and Bet Online has way more odds and info from game scores, totals, player performance props to where the next fired manager is going to land or who the first fired manager is going to be. Regardless of what you want to bet on, Bet Online remains the number one spot for all sports betting here in 2022 and it's not just baseball from the nba and nhl playoffs which are really starting to ramp up to esports boxing and ufc right to your favorite vegas casino games do not wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2022 season bet online is both the fastest and the easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports and vegas casino games bet online where the game begins. All right, we're back here on the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast. Moving on into segment two today, I also wanted to be sure to talk about the Vegas Golden Knights firing Pete DeBoer yesterday, which adds another name to the list of potential next head coaches for the Chicago Blackhawks. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Waza. Happens. Um, but on the show yesterday, uh, I hope you all tuned into that. If not, definitely go check it out because I spoke with Gil Martin from Locked On Islanders about Barry Trotz being fired and the possibility of him actually coming to Chicago and to coach through a rebuild here. Uh, and the reason why I did that, again, go and check that out. It was a very insightful interview. I highly recommend going and listening if you want to hear more about Barry Trotz and the actual chances of him becoming the next head coach of the Blackhawks. Um, but the reason I did that was because a lot of ears, a lot, a lot of Blackhawks fans had their ears perked up when the news broke that the Islanders had let Barry Trotz go, someone who had helped really changed the direction of that franchise and had a lot of success there. They had back-to-back -back Eastern Conference final appearances, both times, unfortunately, falling to the Tampa Bay Lightning. Um, and with all the success, you know, that, that he's had there, um, not only in New York also, but uh, leading the Washington Capitals to a Stanley Cup as well, um, being a longtime coach for the Nashville Predators and leading them to a lot of Stanley Cup playoff appearances. Um, but, you know, with all that success that he's had, it makes a ton of sense as to why Blackhawks fans would be so intrigued by the possibility of him potentially coming to Chicago, even if it doesn't seem all that likely. It's still very interesting and has a lot of Blackhawks fans uh, thinking about what could be. But for Pete DeBoer, it was interesting because it seems like Blackhawks fans are on the complete 
opposite end of the spectrum about him possibly being the next head coach. I did not see a lot of positive comments regarding DeBoer uh, coming to Chicago yesterday. And I kind of understand why. Um, I kind of go back and forth here for a couple of different things. First, I understand why, because uh, even though, you know, he did have a lot of success in his time with Vegas, uh, he was rumored to have a little bit of a sour relationship with some of his players, most notably with Robin Leonard, who was a goaltender for the Blackhawks there for a little bit, if you all remember. Um, but, you know, in regards to the injury that Leonard suffered this year, DeBoer made, made a bunch of curious comments and almost made it sound like he didn't believe that Leonard was actually injured or something. It was a really interesting back and forth, and there were a lot of uh, weird comments made. I have a feeling that Robin Leonard could be um, on the verge of having his Twitter fingers go loose and calling out Pete DeBoer. We've seen Leonard be a savage on Twitter many of times. What a guy Robin Leonard is real quick. I mean, one of my favorite Twitter follows. The guy's so open and honest, really an open door, and it's been remarkable to see that the comeback and um, what he's been able to do in the NHL for the past couple of years. But anyways, it was just really weird to see those interactions between uh, not DeBoer and Leonard face-to-face, but through the media. It was like they were each throwing shade at each other a couple times throughout the year. Uh, And then also on top of that, of course, with the roster that the Vegas Golden Knights had this year to, to not make the Stanley Cup playoffs, I know they were absolutely ridiculed with injuries throughout the way, but um, I feel like most of us, or at least I certainly, I did think that Vegas was going to find their way in. They did not. And ultimately DeBoer wound up losing his job. Um, But other than that, DeBoer, he has coached some really good teams here in the past couple of years. He was also the coach of the San Jose Sharks when they made it all the way to the Stanley Cup final before coming up short to the Pittsburgh Penguins. Um, Obviously, he was the coach for Vegas the last couple of years. They've fallen short, but uh, some really good regular seasons. Uh, They were close a couple of times to going on a run in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Last year, it it was just kind of mind-blowing that they fell to the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, But he has a lot of valuable experience from behind the bench. And one thing I was thinking about when I I saw all this disdain from the Blackhawks fans, if you will, on DeBoer, was that I, I was wondering if they're kind of blinded by... DeBoer being the coach of the Vegas Golden Knights, who are probably the most hated team in the entire NHL this year. I wonder if that's kind of causing some of the Blackhawks fans out there to not really like the idea of DeBoer coming to Chicago because he has coached a lot of winning teams throughout the years. And um, I don't have him quite in the same upper echelon, if you will, as Barry Trotz, but I definitely think the Blackhawks could do a lot worse with Pete DeBoer a lot worse than Pete DeBoer as their next head coach. And speaking of the next head coach for the Blackhawks, by the way, in their media session yesterday, uh, Davidson did reiterate that the team is still looking to have something in place uh, by mid-July sometime right around the NHL draft. And I know people out there are itching for the Blackhawks to make a decision, especially with a couple of new fresh faces out there on the market. Um, But more so than anything, again, it just sounds like Davidson wants to take the time to do the proper research and make sure they come to the correct decision. They don't want to rush themselves into anything that they aren't 100% on. And I feel like that's something Stan Bowman did several times throughout the years. So I feel like even though Blackhawks fans want there to be a decision made, I feel like they should be happy that there's no rush here that the front office in place is taking the time to be efficient in their research and to go through all the proper candidates because it's really important that they make the right decision here for the future of this team. It's really important and really crucial to this rebuild. So I get that everyone wants the Blackhawks to make a quick move here and to land, you know, Barry Trotz as soon as possible. Um, But I also think that all you fans out there should be happy to hear that the front office is putting in the work in order to make this decision correct. And by the way, not only will Jeff Greenberg, Norm McIver, and Kyle Davidson obviously be leading uh, the search for the next head coach, but former Blackhawks defenseman and Davidson's right-hand man and Brian Campbell will be aiding in the process as well. So 
we, we've heard rumors that Supi, you know, is going to be staying involved. He doesn't have an official title at this moment other than uh, Davidson's right-hand man. Um, but again, this is just going to be a team effort uh, that's going to go into this decision. And um, I think that's the right way to go about it, to have a lot of input, to have other opinions on the matter, not just Stan Bowman's. Um, I think that's the right way to go about it. And because of that, expect – uh, the Blackhawks to still be patient throughout the next couple of months in regard to naming the next head coach of the franchise. All right, there are some thoughts on Pete DeBoer being fired by the Vegas Golden Knights yesterday. Coming up in just a minute, I will get into round two of the Stanley Cup playoffs. But first, I need to talk to you all about Built Bar, which is a protein bar that tastes just like a candy bar. Summer is coming, and you're going to need some food for being on the go. Well, Built Bars are the perfect snack to take with you everywhere you go. Throw them into your bags, throw them into your kids' backpacks, and make sure that everyone has a bar to be fueled for their summer adventures. And the best part about Built Bars is that they're both delicious and healthy. So there's no more sacrificing delicious food for health because with Built Bar, you can have both. You can have the best of both worlds. And have you tried Built Bar Puffs yet? Because if not, then you're seriously missing out on one of the best tasting protein bars on the market with flavors like banana cream pie, cinnamon churro, and birthday cake, which Built Bar just sent me a package of and I got to try. It's absolutely delicious. It's got sprinkles all over the top. It's almost got like a marshmallowy, frostingy filling. It's absolutely tremendous. I definitely would recommend it. And the best part about the Built Bar Puffs is that they're only 140 calories and all of them have 17 grams or more of protein. So head on over to Built.com right now and use the promo code LOCKED15 and you'll get 15% off your next order. That's Built.com with the exclusive promo code LOCKED15, one word LOCKED in all caps, followed by the number 15 to get 15% off your next Built Bar order. Welcome back to the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast. I'm your host, Jack Bushman. Moving on into segment three today, with the second round of the Stanley Cup playoffs set to get underway later this evening, I wanted to be sure to provide some updates and discuss who I think will be moving on to the conference finals. So out west, the teams that we have left are the St. Louis Blues and Colorado Avalanche, along with the Calgary Flames and Edmonton Oilers. Then out east, we have the Florida Panthers and Tampa Bay Lightning, which is going to be an amazing second round series, as well as the Carolina Hurricanes and the New York Rangers. And by the way, folks, what a first round of the Stanley Cup playoffs we all got to witness over the past couple of weeks. Five game sevens over the weekend, tons of good hockey every night. It's literally been everything and more than we could have wanted. Uh, And with these second round matchups on paper, it's looking like uh, we're in for another treat starting later this evening. But overall, not to toot my own horn, but I had a pretty solid first round in terms of predictions. The only two series that I got wrong uh, were the Blues and the Wild, which I did say I thought St. Louis was going to win, but I was rooting for Minnesota because of uh, the conditions that they had with the Blackhawks for the Marc-Andre Fleury trade. I even said that on Twitter. I do think the Blues will win, but I'm hoping that the Wild are going to win in seven. So I kind of got that one wrong. And then the other series was Boston and Carolina. I had Boston winning game seven, which the Hurricanes ultimately ended up coming out with a victory. Um, But other than that, Off to a good start so far in the Stanley Cup playoffs. I still got my Stanley Cup final matchup alive. My Stanley Cup champion still alive. Really only got one series wrong if you're thinking about it. Um, But getting into some of the series, though, that we have set here for the second round of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Out West, let's start with the St. Louis Blues and the Colorado Avalanche, who open up the second round later tonight at 6.30 p.m. Central Time, I believe. Uh, And I personally... I have the Calgary Flames representing the West in my bracket challenge, but I I really wish I could go back and change that at this point because I truly believe whoever wins this series between the Avalanche and the Blues is going to the Stanley Cup. And I do still think the Avs 
are the better team here and have the upper hand. They're just so deep and the amount of skilled players that they have is actually ridiculous. Um, but as much as it kills me to say, they can't sleep on a roster like the St. Louis Blues, especially with Jordan Bennington back in net now and uh, appearing to have found his groove in those final couple games of the series. Colorado cannot sleep on this experienced and veteran St. Louis Blues team. I'm still going to go with Colorado in six games, but I would not be shocked in the slightest if the Blues put up a better fight than a lot of folks expect. They're, they're a team that knows how to win this type of this time of year. They have a lot of the same roster makeup as they did when they won the cup back in 2019. And I think if anyone out West is going to go toe to toe with the Avs, I, I really do believe it's the St. Louis blues as much as that pains me to admit. Um, as for Calgary and Edmonton, neither really had the most impressive of first rounds, you know, both having to play in game seven against Dallas and Los Angeles. I originally had Edmonton winning that series in five. I had Calgary winning in six. It got a little little sketchy there at the end, um, but both teams ultimately managed to win game seven and advance on to the second round for this must-see TV battle of Alberta. I think this is easily going to be the most physical of all the second round series. It's going to be an absolute war out there. Um, I do. I am still going to go with my Calgary Flames. Um, I don't know if they're going to end up reaching the Stanley Cup final like I predicted, but I do think they're going to end up beating the Edmonton Oilers here. Um, but I, I, if there's a series that's, I mean, I guess they're all kind of up for grabs, but this one I think is more uh, of just kind of a toss up because again, neither team really impressed all that much in their opening round, except for uh, finding a way to come out with a victory in, in game seven. Uh, but I think Calgary has the better defense. They have the better goaltending for sure. And I think that's really going to matter. That's crucial, as we all know, in the Stanley Cup playoffs. So that's why I'm going to go with the Calgary Flames here in seven games. Out east, I think uh, we're in for an absolute dogfight as well in the battle of Florida between the Panthers and the back-to-back -back defending Stanley Cup champion Tampa Bay Lightning. The battle of Florida is back for the second consecutive year, and you know the Panthers are going to be out for blood after the way their season came to a close last time around. Ultimately, though, I do think this is going to be a, a super fun series, like like they're all going to be, really. Um, but I think knowing how to win this time of year, and especially in big games, Tampa Bay has done it time and time again. They just won a huge game seven on the road in Toronto where it took literally everything they had. Um, I think that experience is really going to take them over the top against Florida. I think Florida might be the more skilled team from top to bottom. I don't know if, well, I know they don't know how to win this time of the year like Tampa Bay does. No one does really. So I am going to go with the Tampa Bay Lightning as boring as it is to defeat the Florida Panthers in six games. The last series, the New York Rangers and the Carolina Hurricanes. Uh, I think New York, I expect them to have a lot of momentum on their side after coming back from that three to one series deficit to win in overtime in game seven, Artemi Panarin, the bread man, with the GWG, with a snipe through traffic. Honestly, me and my buddies were talking about this. I watched that replay five or six times. I still have no idea how that puck got through everybody. It did. The Rangers end up moving on, possibly putting an end to the Pittsburgh Penguins as we know it. The big three of Sidney Crosby, Chris Letang, Evgeny Malkin. Who's going to be coming back next year? There is a chance they run it back again, but who knows? Those three have been together for a long time, and without a lot of playoff success in recent years, it could be time to go in a different direction. But I do think momentum is going to be in the New York Rangers' favor. Uh, I expect them to continue rolling right from the get-go. They got momentum on their side, as they said, and I expect them to defeat the Carolina Hurricanes in six games. All right, folks, I think that is going to wrap up Tuesday, May 17th episode of Locked On Blackhawks. Thank you again for tuning into the show and be sure to go and follow the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast wherever you get your podcasts and be sure to subscribe to Lockdown Blackhawks on YouTube and you'll be able to get the latest episode as soon as it comes out each day. And after the show, 
be sure to go and tune into the Lockdown NHL podcast to get all the latest news and updates from every team that's still remaining in the Stanley Cup playoffs. It's free and available on all platforms, so be sure to check out Lockdown NHL right now wherever you get your podcasts. Once again, thank you for tuning into today's episode. I'm your host, Jack Bushman. You can find me out on Twitter at Jack Bushman 2 or you could also go and check out my Strictly Blackhawks account at Talk and Hockey for all the latest Blackhawks news and updates. And for any questions at all regarding anything related to the show, feel free to email LockdownBlackhawks at gmail.com. You can also hit me up on any one of my Twitter accounts, or you can call 708-653-0572 to leave a voicemail. So until tomorrow's episode, thanks again for checking out the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team 